Um, and with me today, I've got two of my very favorite billing conductor experts, and we're going to be talking all about AWS Billing Conductor today. Um, Rich, can you give a, a quick two-minute intro? Who are you? Where are you? What's your yeah. background? What do you like yeah. to do? Happy to do that. Yeah. Hi, hi everybody. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rich Roscoe. I'm a technical account manager out of Boston. I've been with AWS for six plus years now, in the uh, still in the TAM role. Uh, I uh, uh, considered a, a subject matter expert for Billing Conductor. Love talking about the service and uh, interacting with folks about it. Um, and when I'm not working, I love to go cycling. Unfortunately, can't do it today here in Boston. It's uh, 27 with a uh, feels like 16. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So our goal today in the next 50 minutes to an hour is to kind of take you through everything that you know need to know about Billing Conductor super fast, um, speak to how it handles our eyes and savings plans a little bit, and then show some of kind of the new things that we've built to add on to Billing Conductor to make it a little bit lighter of a lift to kind of do the things that we hear customers want to do often. Um, so if you don't know anything about the service, don't worry. That's what you're here for. We'll take you through it. Um, but where we want to really start is kind of a, a once over of what's new, even within the past year, because when it first launched, I think we had a lot of confusion. There were kind of some pricing hiccups that we had to work out. Um, and the team has really focused on getting it into a state that is kind of exactly what customers had been asking for when those initial launches came out. So, Rich, I'm going to pass it over to you. I know okay. you kind of want to talk a little bit about what's improved. So right. let's, let's give them the news. Let's dig into it. All right. So uh, hopefully you can see my screen here. Uh, the, the first thing I want to show you, though, is if you go to the uh, AWS What's New with uh, AWS page. And I'm on the uh, 2023 uh, page right now. Uh, and you filter by building conductor, you get a list of things here. And essentially, what I the first thing I want to start with is the pricing change. So over here on the Billy Conductor pricing change. Sorry so. to stop you, Rich. Can you zoom in just a little bit? Your screen's kind oh. of small. Oh, really? Okay. Oh. oh, that is so much better. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. So over here on the uh, AWS Billy Conductor pricing page, we see that the for uh, each account in a billing group, the first 500 counts are $8.25. And then the price goes down for the next number of accounts. And so that's a great improvement over what it used to be. I, well, I won't get into what it, what it used to look like and how that worked, but this is very simple. So, uh, so how does the pricing start? So when you create a billing group, and we'll talk about that down the road, but when you create a billing group and an account goes into a billing group, that's when you start accruing charges. And so for every account in a billing group, if you have, you know, you put five accounts in, each account will be charged $8.25. The other good thing to know is there is a free trial uh, period and it's the first 62 days. When does the free trial start? It starts as soon as you create your first billing group, there has to be one or more accounts in the billing group. So, uh, and if you, um, you know, billing, billing conductor isn't for you, if you delete all your billing groups, then the, the charges will stop. Once the free trial starts, there's no way to unwind it. If you delete all your billing groups and say, I want to come back, you know, in a month, no, the free trial is going to keep going, even though you're not doing anything. So uh, be sure you really want to get started before you... Um, kick off the uh, free trial. Yeah, uh, and the... one thing I will say quickly about the free trial is Rich yeah. mentioned that we do a lot of intro calls with customers about that. I think Scotty and I have done a couple <laughs> um, after reInvent as well, now that Billing Conductor is kind of getting a little bit more buzz around it. Um, and what we see most often is folks using the service to essentially mock up and build a proof of concept, making sure it works for them, getting an idea of what that data looks like, and then making the decision whether to continue. And that right. kind of two month free trial gives you all the time that you need to do that. You've got essentially two periods of look back to, to check out um, before you make that decision about what's right for your business. You know, and, and keep it simple in the beginning, create one billing group, put in a couple of accounts, 
and um, give it a chance to populate. It's going to take, you know, you know, eight, eight to 24 hours to get things to initially show up uh, and, you know, and start taking a look at it. So, so after the pricing change, the next thing we have was uh, service scope free tier pricing rules. So what does that mean? So a pricing rule, that's a way to adjust the cost Megan, of- Can you make this just a little bigger? Sorry oh, again. I can, Sorry, I keep, can. keep interrupting, yeah. yeah. How's that? Perfect. Okay. So a pricing rule is the way to affect the cost of the services for the accounts that are in a billing group. And one of the pricing rules that we, one of the initial pricing rules we had was the global free tier. And if you have it present in a pricing plan, what it does is it allows you to deactivate the free tier for all of the accounts that support free tier. Uh, the service team then came out with uh, uh, service specific free tiers. So for Lambda, if you wanted to just deactivate the Lambda free tier, you could create this pricing rule, add it to the pricing plan associated with the billing group you wanted to uh, deactivate the Lambda free tier for, and uh, and there you have it. Okay, so <clears throat> the next uh, uh, small change they added was this auto account association for uh, for billing groups. So if you go over here on the billing conductor page where we're here on the pricing configuration, um, and if we go to billing groups, and if we say create a new billing group here, um, what you can do is say for a particular billing group, an existing one or a new one, you can enable automatic account association for this billing group. So if a new account is created in your organization and uh, ABC works within ABC, short, uh, short for AWS Billing Conductor, if um, you have this set, any new accounts that are created in your, in your organization will automatically be associated with this billing group. If that doesn't work for you and you want accounts to be associated to different billing groups, uh, depending upon you know, some other uh, mechanism you would you would have to develop that uh, that code yourself but at least there is a way to get them to show up and then uh, you know um, as Scotty said uh, the big one here was cost explorer so up until this announcement uh, let me see here uh, create a billing group what happened here Let's go over to Cost Explorer. Sorry about that. No worries. I think I clicked on the wrong thing here. And while you're kind of pulling that up. While it's loading, yeah. Yeah. So, so go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, we're, we're back now. So, so up until there was support for uh, ABC with Cost Explorer, if, if within a billing group, and right now I'm in the primary account of billing group two. Uh, up until this integration, if you pulled up Cost Explorer, you would see your consolidated bill, which is the bill for your payer account. Now with this Cost Explorer integration, when we're in billing group two and we pull it up, now we see just the accounts that are in the billing group. And to sort of prove that to you here, um, you see, this is my billing group two. It's the primary account. Uh, it's the primary account over here. And these are the two other member accounts in the billing group. So uh, that's, that's a big one because uh, otherwise, um, uh, you know, in, for a particular billing group, the, the users or the business units or whoever owns that billing group, they couldn't easily see uh, just uh, their charges they would instead see everybody else's charges. So what uh, this Cost Explorer <laughs> launch really allows you to do as kind of a FinOps professional or as, as an admin is you can define different billing groups within your organization that are different subgroups of linked accounts. And then with the Cost Explorer integration, you'll set a primary account. You can kind of think of that as like a sub payer account for each of those billing groups. And from that primary account, all of the other accounts in the billing group will have view access um, to the entire group in Cost Explorer, just like Rich is showing. 
So instead of essentially only having the two options of payer view of all linked accounts or linked account view of only that linked accounts charges and nothing else, um, this enhancement and this feature release that happened mid-year last year um, essentially allows you to define different cost explorer <laughs> views based on those billing groups, which is really powerful for customers that have different business units that don't necessarily need to be able to see each other's charges. Or if you are an AWS partner um, within kind of the, the space where you're providing services to different customers and you need a level of kind of security and delineation between each customer group. Right, right. And, you know, as I said, for this particular billing group, it has two member accounts. And because this is the primary account, I showed you that you can see the charges for all three accounts. But if you were to log into one of the member accounts here and you pulled up Cost Explorer, you would see Cost Explorer just for that account. So further, further scoped. Uh, the next nice change that the, uh, and really, um, in addition to Cost Explorer, I think this was 1B, is, is the margin analysis. And um, if we come over here to uh, billing groups, so if we pull this up, so this is the uh, ABC console. And if you go to, um, let's say the dashboard here. And uh, what the dashboard shows you, can we see this okay, Savannah? Is it a yep. good, yeah. So it shows you the, uh, gives you an overview of your billing groups. And you can see here that I have four billing groups set up. Uh, and you know, kudos to the service team. They've really made some nice improvements in the UI in terms of being able to see things, they pop out more. So uh, thank you for that. It's, uh, this is, uh, uh, this sort of change went under the radar, wasn't announced, but uh, I, I definitely noticed it. Uh, so uh, so what what is uh, the margin? So when you have a billing group, you have the charged amount. So for each billing group, you using uh, a pricing plan uh, and custom light items, you control what the services are charged for the accounts in the billing group, and that's the charged amount. Uh, the AWS costs, those are the costs for those same services as part of your AWS organization. And the charged amount may be less or more depending upon how you have your uh, pricing plan set up for a particular billing group and how you have set up your any custom line items for a billing group as well. But the difference between these two is the margin. And we can see here that for all of my billing groups, uh, this is what the margin is. Now, if we go over to the margin summary page, you can look at all billing groups or you can select a particular billing group. And if we, let's say, um, yeah, we'll keep it at March and we select, let's say, billing group four. And so we can see here that for March so far, uh, they're being charged $49.11, but the AWS costs are $7.53 and the margin is $41.58. Right, so, so really prize gouging these guys. I know. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my uh, business unit that I'm in is really, it's really taking a pounding here. <laughs> and <laughs> so up, so this is what it looked like when it first came out. And this next field here, the margin details, this wasn't here. So this is new and uh, this margin analytics. And when you click on it, it does a really, really nice job for a particular billing group. It shows you the trend for the services. So you can see for each of the services what the, uh, where, where, where the margin is coming from and the analysis allows you to dig in and help you figure out uh, what's going on, what is making up the margin. And you may discover that, hey, I see that free tier is kicking in because um, you know my Lambda costs are a little bit lower than what I would have expected. Let me go turn that off, for example. So the margin analysis, a critical tool, uh, margin details, critical tool for figuring out what is driving that margin. Yeah. Um, so one of the classic examples that I usually use when I'm demoing to show kind of the usage yeah. type granularity and kind of 
what you can do as an admin to mark up a service if you want to de-incentivize certain behavior um, is GP2 versus GP3. So I think at this point, um, most folks out there know that GP3 is the newer, cheaper offering um, within Billing Conductor because it allows you to essentially customize the rates that your end users see. Um, what you can do is give folks a, an additional discount on GP3 perhaps, and then give folks essentially a markup on GP2 specifically. So if you're really trying to get people to migrate and you want to really kind of come down hard with that um, stick rather than the carrot, uh, you can essentially make them pay extra for not migrating. And right. within this margin report, if that is kind of how you decide to set your pricing, it's fairly easy to see at a glance which portion of that is coming from maybe that GP2 markup just based on right. kind of the service and eyeballing the report. So this granularity is super helpful, especially if you are using it as a way to essentially incentivize certain things. Um, it's it's a great like one pane of glass view to see what's going on in all of your accounts and with those billing rules. Yeah, it really is. It really is. It's been super helpful. When I saw it first came out, I was I was thrilled. Uh, and then last, but certainly not least, and it's a great segue uh, into uh, the primary, one of the primary topics that we wanted to talk about today uh, is there was a great improvement to custom line items. And custom line items, uh, if we go back here for a minute, uh, think of it as a, an additional fee that you can add to a billing group. And what I did here is I created a fee called the management fee, and I gave it a fee of 1% for the cost of the billing group. And so here, you can see here that uh, the fee is for billing group four. It started on March 21st, and I'm charging it 1% of the gross cost of the billing group. And uh, up until this recent feature, that I'm about to show you. When you created a custom line item, the custom line item was always assigned to the primary account of the billing group. And then the service team came out with this very nice change. So I'll just, I won't actually create it, but I'll show you here. Uh, so we'll just call test test. And we'll say it's, and for custom line items, you can create them for the current month or the previous month. So let's say you have a charge that doesn't become known until the month has closed. Let's say you're in March and you need to do some calculations in April for March. Uh, you can come back and click on previous month when, you know, when April comes around. This will say March uh, and you can click on it and then say whether it's a one month charge. It would be if you were going back, probably select the billing group. And let's say it was billing group four. But here's the here's the big change. So billing group four, probably not a good choice because there's only one account in that billing group. But instead of applying it just to the primary account, you can now apply it to a specific account in the billing group. And so that is super helpful. And uh, I don't want to steal the thunder of why, because we'll be talking about that uh, in great detail in, in a few minutes. So uh, Savannah and Scotty, uh, back to you. Those are the um, key okay. updates since the middle of last year to APC. Awesome. Thanks, Rich. 